Hey everybody, welcome back to the RI Amateur Series. This is episode three, and we are on the eve of the RI Amateur, taking place from July 11th to the 15th at Wanam Autonomy. Uh, should be an amazing week. It's always one of the best weeks of the year uh, to watch golf for me and play golf for these guys. And I'm uh, super excited to have you joining me for episode three is Max Jackson. Max, thanks so much for taking a few minutes. I know you're, you're a busy guy on the eve of the tournament, but thanks so much for taking a few minutes. Uh, no problem at all. Um, looking forward to it. Talk about, so let's just start there and then we'll get into everything else. Obviously, you're already pretty accomplished. We want to get into the Junior AM and uh, some other things as well. But just talk about on the eve of a big tournament like this, whether it's the amateur or whatever else, what are the what are the nerves? What are the emotions? What What is that whole process for you like on the eve of a big tournament? Um, well, on the eve of this tournament, not going to go like trying to change my swing. It's just kind of uh, just getting confidence, doing little things to make me feel good about tomorrow. And I really like the course we're playing this week, Quantum Autonomy. I, I feel pretty comfortable on it. So um, it's more of just excited than nervous, to be honest. Um, I, I like the way this events run. I like the two two stroke play portion, uh, two stroke play rounds, and then getting into match play. I love match play, so I think it's going to be a really good event. Now you, you played a practice round a lot of time. I think you told me on Thursday afternoon, I believe, after the Providence Open. Uh, what you you brought it up. So what, what did you think of Wanam Autonomy? I've only played it once. I played it once last year in a Burke Fund event. It was very picturesque. I stink of golf, but it was pretty. <laughs> the scenes are the sights are pretty, uh, which counts for something. But what, what did you think of the course? Um most people will notice that it's pretty short. Um, but that that doesn't mean it's easy. The greens are really fast, they're really firm. So even if you drive it close to greens and you're in the rough, I think that's worse than being 100 yards out in the fairway. So I think it's really going to be about managing the course and playing smart, not necessarily hitting driver all over the place. Yeah, it's just been, I, well, I like because there's a few holes where I love the course to have the, the raised tees and you just let one fly for all intents and purposes. You can kind of see the ball kind of go. I think that's really cool uh, for any course that has that. Um, I just think it's one of those cool tee shots um, in, in golf. Um, so obviously, middle of summer, but you've already had uh, an amazing summer, starting with uh, obviously the high school state championships and leading the South to a team championship. But then re most recently, uh, you qualified for the junior amateur at Bandon Dunes, which pretty much by every publication – the abandoned dunes and their whole abandoned campus is ranked as one of the best golf courses uh, in the country and in the world. Again, by any publication that does rankings, they're all up there. Um, that qualifier, uh, as you, actually uh, your dad was telling me, uh, you have to uh, a struggling start a bit, uh, struggling as a relative term, of course. Um, but then you, you kind of turned it around and kind of got into the, you know, obviously you, I think you what cold medalist honors. Uh, I believe for the tournament or something along those lines, but just talk about that particular qualifier and then uh, the getting into the junior M. Obviously that's a big deal. Yeah. So uh, that day, it wasn't a good weather day. It was, it was really rainy and it was just kind of a mental toughness day, but through like the first 10, 11 holes, it was just really rainy. So it's just kind of managing getting to the greens and just trying to make par. But then after the, 11th hole I believe the skies opened up and stopped raining so I knew people were going to make birdies and I just started hitting it close and got on a little streak so I think yeah I was two over through 11 and then I had three in a row and then I birdied 16 so those those were very pivotal coming in because I knew once the uh, weather got better people were going to make some birdies so um and yeah, that's something that I set my eye on each year. I've done it three times now. So to finally get into this tournament, it means a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's been won by, you know, Scotty Shuffler. And I think Tiger probably won one back in the day because I think he won everything uh, back in the day. But what is, you know, as a Rye Islander going to the junior AM, it obviously doesn't happen uh, all too often. Uh, you know, what is, how excited are you to get there? And what do you think that whole experience is going to be like? 
I'm really excited because uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the only kid from Rhode Island. So get to represent the people that got me here, like my country club, Pawtucket Country Club and the RIGA, what they've done for me. So I'm glad I can go there and hopefully represent them um, in a very positive way. But I think that this is definitely going to be the toughest tournament I've ever played in. And the competition is going to be uh, the toughest I've ever faced. So and I know Bandon is like a lengthy course and it's something that I'm not really used to playing in the Northeast. So um, the practice rounds are going to be really important to understand the course and just understanding how to play golf on the West coast. I think that's going to be a good experience as well. Do you, one thing I always enjoy about you and the few times I've talked to you after state championships and and other times uh, you, you acknowledge, you know, you've openly said that you wanted to, you want to win four straight high school championships. And obviously your, your knowledge of uh, guys like Will Dixon, Davis Chatfield, Patrick Welch and, and others, uh, is really something that interests me because, uh, you know, you seem to, you know, history, history, which is really cool. Um, but for you, do you, as a high schooler, how do you handle kind of the, the, the superstardom, if you will, that, that comes along with being, with being, I mean, do you, do you feel that? I mean, do you, do you realize there's like a buzz everywhere you go just about when people like, Tommy McCormick said to me yesterday, like, oh, I'm really excited to play with Max Jackson in the U.S. Amateur Qualifier. I interviewed uh, Eugene Desar, who was like a R.I. golf historian slash legend. Uh, and he's like, oh, I want to go out to Triggs and watch watch Max play because I've been her- hearing about this kid, you know, and part of it's my own fault with golf news, all right? But uh, either way, uh, but, but, as a, but as a high schooler, how, how do you handle that? Do you, do you feel that at all? Do you, do you even care? How, do you, how does that ha- work? Um, yeah. I, I think it's it's really cool and I aspire having um having like that superstar them you called it, but it doesn't really change how I play. I just kinda don't think about it on the course. Um I just kinda let it happen and I think that I, I don't I don't strive for the attention. I just kinda play and if I play well then that's good. And if I don't play well, then just kind of restart and go on to the next one. But um, I appreciate people who look up to me and um, yeah, I, I don't, I really, I don't really think too much of it. I just kind of let it happen and fall into place. Cause I feel like if I think about it during a round, then it'll just kind of mess me up. So. And then, you know, what I think again, what I think is cool is your knowledge of you know guys before you, Will Dixon, Patrick Davis. Uh, wh- where does that come from? Are you have you always been kind of a art, uh, golf, not a, a historian, but you have you always known kind of the history of the local game? Where, where does your knowledge of them come from? Because I think that's you know really impressive. Obviously, they've several years older than you, and uh, they're closer to my age than they are to your age. Mm-hmm. Um, but where, where where does that come from? Because I think that's kind of a cool thing about you as well. Yeah, I, I used to I used to go out and watch like Junior M's when I was like seven, eight years old. And I remember going to Metacomet and watching them in their short games. I'm like, wow, I want to be like them one day. So um, to just see that when I was younger, it motivated me to hopefully get to their level. And I, I just think what they do for such a small state or the small state in the United States I think it's really cool, and I just wanted to represent the way they did. And uh, Will Dixon says that – Will Dixon told me that he hopes that you go for uh, the four straight high school titles. He's following from wherever he is in the country. Uh, he's obviously a pro now, but he's 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 paying attention, so uh, make sure you tie that record. He, he awesome. wants you to tie that record anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so uh, back to the uh, – obviously, you've done a lot. Back to the amateur here. Match play, you said you love match play. You don't play a ton of match play, high school is stroke play. Uh, you know, the quali- a lot of the qualifiers, most of the qualifiers are match pl- or stroke play, excuse me. Uh, what's, what's your mindset going into match play? Is it is it different or is it kind of the same, you know, type of thing? Um, I, I kind of play it the same. I don't really try to change anything. Uh, my game it is kind of making a lot of pars, so... 
that's what I try to do in match play as well is kind of limit the mistakes because that could get in the opponent's head. So I just kind of take it, take it slow and try to let them make the mistakes. And at one of autonomy, the course is really short. So if you're in the fairway, the birdies will come, but I think it's definitely just going to be about pacing yourself and um, kind of taking what the course gives you. Yeah. And, uh, it should be interesting. I, I'm interested to see how the course plays. Obviously, it's, obviously the RA amateur is one of the great uh, weeks of the year and one of the great – and in the midst of the great stretches in golf in Rhode Island, especially this year with the New England amateur, I think the week after or something like that or around there uh, at Alpine. Uh, but for you, you obviously continue to have a busy stretch, uh, Challenge Cup stuff, uh, this. How do you – when you have all these events in a row uh, or pretty close to in a row – how, how do you balance that? How do you, you know, prepare for all these kind of events and how do you, how do you, but, but also getting your rest and, you know, let's be honest, being a kid, how, how do you kind of balance all of these things? Um, I, there's, there's definitely been a lot of events this summer already. And you can't, if you, if you have a bad round, you can't really overthink it. You just, I think bad rounds, they're going to come. So you just got to, deal with them and move on. And with having all these tournaments, you're not really going to make big changes to your game as well. So when you have those practice days in between events, I think it's just kind of refining um, what's been working, not necessarily changing the whole entire swing. So that's kind of what I think about when I go to practice and um, yeah, there hasn't really been much of, being a kid, there's just so many tournaments, but I like it that way. And I, I wouldn't want to do anything else. So, um, but yeah, rest is definitely important. So I, after these events, I definitely take some time off, whether it's a day or two in between. Um, that's really important because if you, if you get too worn out, just it isn't fun anymore. So, um, that's, that's another big part of it for me. Now, you're going to be a junior at LaSalle, unbelievably. Um, it seems like you were a freshman just a short a short time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're going to be a junior. Uh, and maybe you don't necessarily have the answers, but, I mean, have you have you thought about colleges? Are you starting to think kind of colleges and, and playing different tournaments for kind of colleges? Has that crossed your mind yet, or you're not, not quite there yet? Um, no, I definitely think the, the U.S. junior is going to help a lot. Um, mm -hmm. there'll be a lot of coaches there and hopefully making it to match play. That's, that's the little goal right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and if that happens, hopefully getting deeper in the tournament, but getting into those bigger tournaments, I played in a, um, bigger one earlier this year, the Scott Robertson, that was, that was kind mm -hmm. of a taste of like what these bigger tournaments and what these colleges are looking at. So playing in that was really important. And now the U S junior is going to obviously be bigger, but I just, I know the competition that's going to be there. So um, yeah, I'm definitely trying to get into bigger events because playing in the Northeast is great. And the challenge cup and RGA, all these events are cool, but colleges also look at tournaments to like away from home to see if you can play in other places. So that's what I'm trying to do as well. Absolutely, that matches with what Will Will told me in an article I did with him uh, last year. Actually, we broke that he was turning pro. There's no one even even knew. He just said, uh, "I said, what advice would you give guys like Max and, and others that are trying to, you know, follow you in your footsteps in a way?" And he said, "The key is to get out of Rhode Island because you have to play big, like you mentioned, you have to play bigger events and kind of get out of the northeast in the state." So, uh, yes, yeah, uh, it makes it lines up with his. His thoughts, but um, over the last since Will committed to, and I'd be interested to get your take on this. Since Will committed to to Georgia Tech in his sophomore year, uh, there's been about ten to twelve rounders committing to to Division One colleges, from Will to Patrick to Davis. Um, obviously, most recently, uh, your buddy Harry Dessel committed to to Lafayette. Uh, a handful of others, Allison Pig is at Columbia, Alex Florio. A number of players, rounders, are committed to Division One colleges to play golf. And before before that, before Will, uh, I don't think anybody was going to Division One college for golf. But mm -hmm. from your perspective, 
and, and I'm, just, you know, we're obviously hoping that you're going to be the, you'll be the next one here shortly. But from your perspective, what is that? What's in the water in the Rhode Island Gulf? What's, you know, the stress of kids going to D1 colleges from Will to now, you know, most recently Harry, and I'm sure there's a couple of others coming down the pike. But what do you think that is? Why, why this great stretch of, of kind of junior golf, if you will, in Rhode Island? Um, I think that the U.S. Challenge Cup run by Dave at Amonis, that that was key for a bunch of people. I saw that like Patrick, Davis, and Will, they, they all played in Challenge Cup events as well. Um, then the RIGA letting juniors get into these men get into the men events. I think that's key as well because um, we saw Davis win as a high schooler the men's am. So mm-hmm. getting into these big events where they're playing people with much more experience, I think that's really important. So Challenge Cup and RIGA just giving us these shots, I think it's really important and really gave us opportunities to go to these schools or gave them. So um, that, that those are two that have been big for me. And I'm sure Harry can attest to that as well um, through his junior career that they've just done a lot. And that that's what I noticed through um, Patrick, Will and Davis, those, those organizations really helped. Yeah, it's pretty it's been a pretty incredible run um, because, like I said before, Will committed to Georgia Tech as a sophomore. Uh, there was really nobody going to Division One colleges to to play golf. Uh, mm-hmm. There was obviously a lot of hockey players through you know Mount St. Charles and LaSalle and soccer players uh, and different things like that, uh, but not a ton of a ton of golfers. And since he did that, it seems like it's kind of shifted the momentum back to back to golf. At least in my, that's what it feels like in my opinion. But a couple more questions. We'll get you out of here. Uh, I know you have some final preparations to do. Uh, but amateur, our amateur this week. Uh, what what are your what's your goal? I mean, do you do you feel like you can make a deep run? Are you try to get, obviously you made it back to match play the last two years. Uh, uh, but what what are your kind of tournament goals? You'll be you'll be happy if what? Um. Yeah. <laughs> Before this weekend, I had a, a lot of tournaments going on. It was just a lot of golf. So I've taken a couple of days off, um, and I think that's going to really help. So I'm looking to make a good run in this event. I'm hoping to get past the first two days, have a decent seed, and I've never won a match in this tournament. So get get into the round of 16, and I feel like once I get that first match win, it'll get easier from there. So. If, if I could come up with a goal right now, I'd probably want to get into the quarters. Um, but that's a long way away, so I'm just going to have to play by day. Is there – you talk about that first match win in a tournament in the RA Amateur, uh, but just in general, is there a weight that comes off of like, okay, I got the first one under my belt, now I can kind of just go play? Is that a real thing for, for you and players of your caliber where it, there's a real – Kind of like a, a monkey off your back, if you will, if you get that when you get that first win. You think that's a thing? Um, well, so first, I've never I've never win, obviously. I've never won in this tournament, but and I know in the junior am I got that feeling when I won my first match. So I think it's definitely a confidence booster going into the rest of the tournament. Um and I'm hoping I'll get that feeling this year for the first time. But uh yeah, I definitely think it helps when you get past that first match. And you mentioned the junior game, which I completely forgot about because uh, you've done so much in your in your young uh, young career. You're a defending junior game champion. Obviously, you guys had that great match with Harry Dessa last year. It was an epic. Uh, this year, the junior games at three different courses, which mm-hmm. should be interesting. Um, are you planning to de- to defend, defend your title or? Oh yeah, uh, I'm def I'm definitely playing in that event. Uh, I know it's a little funky this year, but. Um... I love that event. It's the one I look forward to each year. So now that uh, I get the opportunity to defend it, I think that's pretty cool. So it's really going to be uh, another like mental tough this week as you're continuously switching courses as you move throughout the event. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a challenge for everyone in the field. Um, 
yeah, people who complain, they're probably not going to make it far. So you just kind of have to roll with the punches on this one. Absolutely. Max Wilson, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to talk to me. Uh, good luck this week. I'm sure I'll see you at one of autonomy uh, throughout the course of the week, but good luck to you. And thanks again for coming on the RIM series podcast.